for coming through many dangers toils and snares we have already come and uh, we are thankful that uh, you're here tonight let's uh, sing a few choruses and then we're going to get into the word of God and then a report about our church and then we're going to nominate deacons for the new year and number four is father we love you and we worship you and adore you, and we give you all the glory, amen. Number 670. You know, we've only had this new hymnal for about four years now, <clears throat> and you would think that I would finally get the <laughs> numbers down, but I'm still learning them. So number 670, this is written by the man who wrote Amazing Grace, and uh, John Newton wrote these words. Very good. Glorious things of thee are spoken, Zion of city of our God, he whose word cannot be broken, form thee for his own abode, on the rock of ages founded, what can shake thy sure repose, with salvation walls surrounded, Thou mayest smile at all thy foes. See 
the streams of living waters springing from the eternal love. Well, supply thy sons and daughters, and no fear of what remove. Who can faint while such a river ever flows their thirst assuage? Grace, which like the Lord, the giver, never falls from age to age. Round each habitation hovering, see the cloud and fire appear. For a glory and a covering, showing that the Lord is near. Thus they march the pillar leading, light by night and shade by day. Daily on the man the feeding which he gives them when they pray. Save your sense of Zion City. I, through grace, a member am. Let the world deride our pity. I will glory in thy name. Fading is the world's best pleasure. All oh, its boasted pomp and show. Solid joys and lasting treasures. None but Zion's children know. Wow, those are good words, you guys. Did you hear that? Solid joys and lasting treasures. None but Zion's children know. Amen. That is good stuff. Let's sing a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, number 672 in your hymnals. Number 672. Do you hear them coming, brother, thronging up the steeps of life? Clad in glorious shining garments, Blood wash pure, pure and bright. Well, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Do you hear the stirring anthems filling up the group and sky? A grand victorious army lift its banner up on high. Tis the glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Tis the glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Never fear the clouds of sorrow. Never fear the storms of sea. We shall triumph on the morrow. Even now our joys begin. Well, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Tis a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Wave the banner, shout his praises, for the victory is nigh. We shall join our conquering Savior, we shall reign with him on high. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the land. Amen. A glorious church without spot or wrinkle. 
Aren't you glad you're part of that church tonight? Say amen. See, Brother Jim, he said amen without even having been asked to say amen. I like it when people think to say amen before somebody says, could you say amen? It's a good idea. How about this song? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Now we're all going to stand together and sing it. And uh, everybody standing, please. <laughs> now, Haley, she asked me yesterday, she said, how come we always do Family of God on Sunday morning, but we never do it on Sunday night? <clears throat> and uh, that was a good point that you made. What's that? Yeah. And now... Actually, you might not want to shake her hand. She's kind of cold, uh, but no, it's all right. She, you're feeling better, right? Are you okay now? Okay, just give her elbow bump maybe. That way you won't get your cold. <laughs> all right, everybody go shake hands with everybody. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. You will notice we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family and these folks are so dear. When one has a heartache, we all shed a tear and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side for a part of the family, the family of God. All right, Brother John, your turn. Oh, you always talk after the family of God, right? <laughs> Don't you always do announcements after the family of God? <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you everybody for being here tonight. Thank you, Vicky, for showing up. Appreciate you coming tonight, wife. And uh, thanks for blowing out my new $100 tire, that I, $200 tire that I just bought. Uh, but we're really thankful for, uh, I don't know. I, I, I hope for $200 I did. I'll find out tomorrow morning, bright and early. What's that? Yeah, that's what, 800 bucks all the way around. That was the cheaper version. I could have got the $1,000 set, but uh, we went for the, for the cheaper ones. Because the car only has 340,000 miles on it, and you know it might not make it much longer. How many miles are on your car? <laughs> 340. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Three. You, yeah, 340,000 miles. How many miles you got on your car? 43, 43 see? Your rich people can afford those new things, but uh, us poor guys, us poor old preachers, we just have to take what we can get. On my what? My horse? That's true. John Wesley had a horse, and he road they said over a half a million miles and uh brother poor horse yeah 
I imagine he had more than one, but uh, he was convinced his horse went to heaven when the horse died. And uh, I don't know if there'll be horses in heaven or not, but uh, what's that? Yeah, my daughter is definitely in the canon, in the group of one. Are you a horse person? Wow, we have a Bible verse that proves horses are in heaven because the Lord returns on a white horse. There you go. Any news about dogs? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I will definitely say there are no cats in heaven, but I don't. <laughs> Uh, well, all right. Well, whatever you really want to be there, I'm sure it'll be better than whatever that is. And uh, whew, I don't know if I'm out of that jam yet or not, but we're going to keep trying. So this is the evening that I'm supposed to give you an annual report about how our church is doing. And there is a passage of scripture. Well, in the, in the great confusion of my life, in the last little bit, I guess I have not brought everything I intended to bring. There's a pastor. There's a passage of scripture that says, "Well, what it was was the Philistines were coming up against uh, the nation of Israel." It's in the book of uh, First Samuel, and uh, Samuel does not do uh, what uh, worldly people would do. He does what a godly man would do. He turns to the Lord in great prayer and asks God to save the nation of Israel from this onslaught. Philistines had iron weapons. They had tremendous better resources than what the army of uh, Israel had. And it really was not a very good match. The Philistines were also, in general, they were taller people. They were bigger men. And, uh, of course, you know, that's where Goliath was from. He was a, one of those giants. But uh, so they're having this huge threat from the Philistines. And Samuel goes to the Lord in prayer. And the next thing you know, God sends this huge storm. And there's lightning and there's thunder. And it's like huge, so huge, in fact, that the Bible uses the word discomfits <laughs> the Philistines to the point that they actually withdraw from the battlefield. And the Bible says that after that day, after Samuel had prayed and the storm came and they were driven back by the forces of nature, uh, that Samuel puts together an altar and he names his altar. Now, it's kind of interesting. We don't really name our altars, but he named his. And they did that a lot in Israel in the day. And uh, he named the altar Ebenezer. And uh, the Bible is so kind to us because it tells us what Ebenezer means. Ebenezer is translated hitherto hath the Lord helped us. What he's trying to say is, we're putting this altar right here because it was right here that I sought God in a moment of great threat to our nation and to the people of God. And God answered prayer and pushed our enemies back and the Bible says that they never bothered Israel again through the rest of Samuel's life. And that was a marvelous, marvelous answer to prayer. Well, I got to say, in, we come to this 26th year, and I got to say, hitherto has the Lord helped us. I mean, when my wife and I moved down here 26 years ago this month to begin this little church, with uh, a prayer that God would somehow help us launch a work for the Lord in a big city. Uh, there were moments of, yes, this is going to be fantastic. And there were moments of, oh, what are we doing? 
And what are we thinking? Did you have any of those moments, Vicki? A blur. And um, we came in here, and uh, God has obviously been with us for these years. And wow, have we faced some storms. Tremendous threats to the ministry here. And yet, the Lord keeps helping us. Sometimes the threats are from without. Sometimes the threats are from within. But the Lord keeps helping us. And he has not failed us yet, and he's not going to fail us. Because hitherto has the Lord helped us. Well, as you know, in the last uh, couple of years, the pandemic has worked all kinds of havoc with all kinds of things in our society. And the church has certainly not been immune to that. In fact, from all the research that comes out now, every church has been taken a toll by this pandemic that people left and many, many still have not returned to the house of the Lord. But what the devil might have thought he was doing in shutting down the church, he miscalculated the will of God's people to still get the message out. Some of us took it to the parking lot, didn't we? Were you there for parking lot church? When on our first Easter Sunday, we stood out there on a little platform and declared, he is risen, he is risen indeed. And all the horns honked, honk, <laughs> we praise the Lord. That was weird, wasn't it, John? John? John thought that was a little bit hard to do announcements out there in the parking lot with the people honking. Yeah. Couldn't see what was going on. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah, windshield, yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit weird for sure. We did that through the sun last, uh, the, for seven weeks, we ended up on Pentecost Sunday uh, with our last outdoor service, uh, where we came in on Pentecost Sunday and had church here. And uh, thank the Lord, we survived the pandemic. And now the church is on the grow. We had 46 on our bus on Sunday, which is a new point for us. Now, we have had a lot more on the bus. Uh, we've had, you know, in Bible school days, we've had 80, I think, on the bus at times. And we had some, and du I'm, Dustin led us to some very saintly people to bring on the bus one time. These kids were just some of the nicest little boys you ever want to meet. Wow, were they a pain. But uh, remember those guys? Yeah, they were rough. Anyway... Uh, but we had a great crowd. We're at 46 is really good for Sunday, though. That's great. You know, there's churches that don't have 46 people in them. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, they could if they went out and asked some people to come and invite them to come. So that's cool. And then our worship service has been growing. We have a, a larger worship number of people. And uh, last Sunday, we had over 100 people throughout the day in our church services. And that's awesome. And that's just a little in, because I mean, there's two and two and a half million people in this town. You got to think there's more than a hundred people that need to hear the gospel in a city this size. Yeah, 21 were in Christie's class, and I want to tell you what that must have been bedlam. Were they pretty organized? So you put Benadryl in their snacks and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's good. Thank the Lord. And um, we've got this Bible distribution, brought some families in already, and it's going to bring some more in. We've got uh, a, the program with the men's ministry and the ladies' ministry, the teen meet, that's still doing well. And uh, we're excited about those ministries growing. We're happy about the opportunity to do the Great Commissions. That's been just a super blessing to our churches, and we're just so thrilled. Pastor Skinner, I uh, went with him yesterday to Chicago where we were 
doing some outdoor, we just a lot of door-to-door yesterday in Chicago, and then we had a, a service in the evening there, and uh, he had a lady that started coming back to church. She used to come as a teenager when, and ride the church van uh, 20 years ago, and when I was out door-to-door calling there in, in Bloomington, I, I saw a guy with some kids, and I talked to him, and he told me they would like to come, so I wrote him down, but when Pastor Skinner went back to that house, that guy doesn't exist. I mean, nobody knows the guy's, I had his name on the paper, and Dennis said, do you know this guy? And the guy does not exist. I mean, I was talking to a phantom, or I was majorly confused. Don't, don't. <laughs> but who cares? Because what happened was, when he went back, he ran into this girl that used to come as a teenager, and she said, I need to get to church. And she started coming, and two weeks ago, she came forward and dedicated her life to Christ and was saved. And last week, she brought the neighbor's kids with her, and she was back at the altar taking communion, and God has worked a marvelous thing in her life. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought we had something in common when I was talking to the guy. You know, um, well, angels know, you know, we have a fellowship. <laughs> no, it wasn't that, I promise you. Um, thank the Lord, though, that that worked out. So um, things are going very good in those ways, and I'm very thankful. Uh, what's that? And we did. I mean, thank the Lord that we had John as our chief engineer in helping to move this organ because he he seems to have experience in the matter he's only moved about a thousand pianos in his lifetime and uh he's done some so we did a very successful organ transplant and uh this is a beautiful rogers organ and it sounds so pretty and we're looking forward to hearing it this sunday amen the man's going to come and install it the man who sold it to us his father was the organist at the cathedral downtown. What do they call it? Basilica? Or do they call it? Is there a name for that? I can't. Oh, it's on Lindell. Anyway, his dad was that organist for 50 years. And um, so we're going to be able to have a true, truly cool thing. And uh, we got that, and we've got a communion table coming, and that's going to be beautiful. And uh, we've got a a beautiful saxophonist that's coming to play the saxophone for us. Vivian has started taking saxophone and she's already can play America, America the Beautiful or the National Anthem? National Anthem. And so we're pretty excited about that. And uh, so we need some more instruments. We need some people to play. Kamani's taking trumpet and uh, Tressel a violin and we got to get some more more instruments. I want to have a full orchestra, a full choir, a fancy, a great organ, a fan, beautiful pianist up there, and we're going to have everybody lifting up the whole building full, and we're going to sing, Life now is sweet and my joy is complete, for I'm saved. We're going to hold it out because we're going to have all those instruments that can just go and go and go and go and go, and then we're going to sing it, Save, Save, and all the Baptists are going to say, Wow, those people got something we need. They're all going to come over here. It'll be a wonderful thing. Amen. All right. So that's some of what's going on. We, we are, you know, three years ago, our mortgage was over $400,000. And today we're at 168. 168. So the Lord has helped us tremendously. That started out uh almost 700 so it's really come a long way and we're very grateful for that and um the giving of the church has been good we're we 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 don't seem to have huge reserves but the lord gives us what we need as we need it and we're very grateful for that He's, what's that yes we are we're three thousand in the bank 
We have 3000 in the bank, and we've given over almost $100,000 to the work of the Lord this year. See, Treasury should thank the Lord for what the Lord's given us and be grateful for his blessings in the life of the church. But we don't have... Oh, no, nobody thought that. We know we are not a dead sea. You, you know about the dead sea, don't you? It's dead because it receives, but it never gives. The water comes in, but it never goes out, and that is why that got all salty, and it's now the Dead Sea, and you can go out there and float real easily. My brother and I were there. We did not float, but we didn't try to. Um, but we did buy some really nice hand lotion that's made from Dead Sea stuff, and my wife's hands were so nice when we got back from that. All right, she wasn't my wife at the time. Um, and then she didn't go with us. Yeah, I met her in a village along the Dead Sea. And no, not really. <laughs> The only village I know along the Dead Sea was Sodom and Gomorrah, and I don't want to really go there, so <laughs> I don't want to say that. Sir. So um, that's cool. And then, um, so we give, and that's why we have, we give, but we give. <laughs> so it really keeps us going, but we're thanking the Lord. He's helping us, we're moving along. And we have new givers this year that we haven't had years past, and that's encouraging. We try to get more and more families to give the more that help the more we can do and the more we can do the more we can do amen and uh, that's great we've got two cameras now for our live stream and chris can switch from one camera to the next and it's and then he goes from that camera to that camera and then he go from that camera to that camera and that camera to that camera it's really cool and uh really i think we should have a demonstration of how chris does that That'd be good. And uh, so we have a lot of great things the Lord's doing for us. So now we come to a time where we want to uh, set up a, have a meeting where we talk about who we would nominate for deacons and uh, for the church. Here, let me just explain very briefly the government of our churches. We came out of a fully congregationally formed government, a church where everything was 100% congregationally governed. But we understood after some time uh, that sometimes there need to be some checks and balances on fully congregational governed churches because sometimes people who are listed on the membership role have not maintained their spiritual life in such a great way and they love to come in and vote out preachers that are preaching the truth. So what we did was this. First of all, we have a council of elders. This is all the pastors in our Crusaders churches sit on this council and the ordained pastors. And uh, they elect a person to be a leader for the council. We call that person our bishop. And uh, my father was the founding bishop of the church and my brother who's at the Urbana church is the bishop now. And uh, so we have them and then we all the pastors sit on this council the council of elders then uh, can cannot change the doctrine of the church in any way they, they, they cannot they cannot alter in any way the doctrine of the church kind of funny the methodist church which is a far leftist organization today but in their discipline they still have john wesley's articles of faith and john wesley's dis, uh, rules <laughs> And they print that every year in their discipline. They don't, they disregard it 100%, but they print it every year. Uh, at least it's a witness kind of to them. But our church, uh, we can't change the doctrine. We have had to clarify some things. For example, we had never before had to state specifically marriage that we believe is between a man and a woman but uh, legal authorities tell us that we have to put that specifically in our doctrine now because if we don't, 
then somebody who is married to a man and married to a man could come and say, I want to be in your church, and we could not legally keep them from being in our church because our doctor didn't say specifically we don't believe in men marrying men, so we put that in there. Isn't that nice? What's that? Uh, that would be part of what we could do, but we could also keep them from being elected to being on our deacon board or being in our Sunday school teachers or being the pastor of the church. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. All, all, all sinners of every variety are welcome at FCC. We don't want anybody that's a sinner to come happy for them to be here. Um, and want them to repent, be saved. My barber asked me today if I'd ever known a homosexual that had gotten saved and changed and gone straight. And I do. And I am thankful for that possibility of grace. It's able to transform a person. Okay, I digress. So then uh, in the local church, uh, the way we do it is our, my tenure here at this church is a function of two things. It's a function of your will and the will of the Council of Elders. So if uh, you were to, and you, there's a provision in our discipline for you to raise up a petition and say, we are sick of Rick, and you could put that together and uh, send that up to headquarters and say, we're sick of Rick. And then the discussion would go up there whether or not uh, you should be as sick of Rick as you are. If they agree with you that they're sick of Rick as well as you're sick of Rick, then Rick is ick and he's gone. And uh, that settles that. If, however, it's determined by the pastors that, uh, oh, you guys are just putting old Rick down because he's being hard on you and he's preaching the truth and you just don't want to hear it, then uh, they can say, regardless of what your petition says, Rick is staying right there preaching the truth and we're with him. And so that's the way we do that. Um, In the, when it comes to the church board, we wanted to be sure that the people choosing these church board members would be people that are really serving the Lord. Uh, the, the perpetual membership concept that is normal is rather hard because if somebody backslides and they're living a terrible life, but it comes time for church elections, they can all come in here, pack the church, make their vote, and push out the good guys and put into place the, the scoundrels and scoundrelize the church. So what we did was we said, okay, you could be a member of our church if you can say these things. With God as my witness, I have saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can say, I earnestly, I am or I earnestly desire to be made perfect in love, sanctified, pure in heart. Uh, if you can say, I believe in the statement of faith and live in harmony with the doctrines and disciplines of the church. And if you can say, I faithfully attend church and support the church with offerings, tithes and offerings. Then you can be a part of this discussion, this uh, nomination tonight. Now, um, I, there was something I was going to point out about that. Hmm. Forgot what, oh, I know. It says here, I faithfully attend the church. Now, I want you to know that faithful does not mean every Easter. <laughs> faithful is assuming that you're going to be there uh, when we're having church. Okay. 
And then, um, and you know what? I really am thankful for people like John and Gary and Joe. I mean, you guys drove a huge distance to be here tonight, and we very much appreciate that. I, I come to see you far less than you come to see me, and I... Oh, now, wait a minute. <laughs> I was just there this week. <laughs> Only time the preacher shows up when he needs something. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but it's very, very much appreciated. And I remember John said many times, I passed, I don't know how many churches on my way to church here tonight. <laughs> but a lot of them are closed on Sunday night, aren't they? They don't have a lot of stuff. Anyway, um, I appreciate that. So then what's going to happen is you would say on this little form, will you serve as a deacon if you were selected? So what we're going to do is we're going uh, to give you the opportunity to nominate people in the congregation that you think might be good as deacons, leaders. We have seven on our, do we have seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six. We have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If, if I vote, it's seven. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. Okay, well, anyway. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is, and I have on the here this form, who is currently a, a, a deacon. We're going to ask you, would you serve as a deacon if you're selected? Would you serve as a Sunday school teacher or a worker? And would you offer your resignation if you're unable to continue or you no longer live in harmony with the covenant? And uh, so that's basically what that amounts to. And so we'll hand this out to you in a minute. Um, I'm going to give me five minutes. I think I can do this in five minutes. I'm going to share with you the vision, mission, statement of faith, and discipline of our church. Listen fast. Our mission is to proclaim God's truth revealed in the Bible without error, to evangelize the lost, to be faithful disciples, to example Christ-like love for God and one another, to promote scriptural holiness of heart and life, to advance Christian virtue in the public square. Our vision is to win and baptize new converts and disciple them into the life and experience of holiness, to have spiritual services. Amen that inspire faith, foster discipleship, advance holiness, increase understanding of Christian doctrine and practice. To strengthen the core of biblically sound and active believers, to raise up leaders, missionaries, miss ministers, teachers, evangelists for our ministry and those who we could send out to other locations, not Texas. Now, Cameron tells me he wants to start a church in Texas. Might be warmer down there, huh? but it'll be a long haul for the Great Commission. Too hot. We believe. He hadn't told you where? Okay. We'll talk to him about that. How about, how about uh, 2969 North Lindbergh? <laughs> All right. Uh, we believe in one God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament, New Testament are inspired by God, are inerrant in the autographs, are the sole authority for matters of faith and Christian life. And whatever is not taught in the Bible or proved by the Bible should not be required of any Christian as necessary for salvation. So, you know, there's stick, it, stick to the text. Life is the gift of God. Human life begins at conception. All men are born with the fallen nature and are inclined to evil. Those who refuse to repent will be lost eternally. The atonement through Jesus Christ is for the whole human race. Whoever repents and believes in the Lord Jesus Christ is justified, regenerated, sanctified, and saved from the dominion of sin, that the very God of peace sanctifies holy, so the whole spirit, soul, and body may be preserved blameless to the coming of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The spirit is fully renewed in the image of God, purified of the stain of inherited depravity and perfected in love, that the Holy Spirit bears witness to her sonship and that our Lord will return. The dead will be raised and the final judgment will take place. 
because we have this faith that overcomes the world, we will, we'll start with the positives, love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. We will be courteous to everyone. Were you courteous to the man that put... That was courteous. Were you courteous to the man who put the tire on the car? And he was courteous to you. Be helpful to those who are of the household of faith and in love for bearing one another. If you want to know somebody who's helpful to those of the household of faith, visit my friend Gary Oliver. That man has helped so many, so many people. And I'm very, very grateful for that. We're also to, in love, be forbearing to one another. So sometimes I know that uh, Cameron can get on your nerves, but you just got to love him and uh, be forbearing. Because love suffers long and is kind, envies not, does not push itself forward, is not puffed up, doesn't act unseemly, doesn't seek her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, never fails. We're going to establish Christian homes, uphold the Christian ideal of marriages between one man, one woman for life, welcome children into homes to be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, attend the service of the church, obey the Lord in baptism, receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, contribute to the support of the church in tithes and offerings, do good to the souls and bodies of men by witnessing, praying, visiting the sick, feeding the hungry, and ministering to those who are in need. We will avoid taking the name of God in vain and filthy talk. Amen. Amen. Don't be a trash talker. We will avoid profaning the Lord's day by doing ordinary work, buying, selling, holiday diversions. We will avoid using or supporting the sale of intoxicating liquors, hallucinogenic recreational drugs, cannabis, tobacco, and illegal drugs. So what I'm trying to get at there is uh, I should have probably put THC, maybe. I don't know if that's more clear. But yeah, I get that. I was just thinking, I was just thinking about that. Okay. But the main point is these hallucinogenic recreational drugs. By the way, did you see that they, the drug cartels are making rainbow-colored fentanyl pills, and they've put millions of them across the Mexican border into the United States, and they are selling these to children now. And there are parents waking up to find their 12 and 13-year-old children dead because they got a hold of the rainbow little pill that somebody sold them or gave to them. I mean, to tell you, that is really sad. I can't imagine. Don't you ever ever, ever do drugs. We will avoid... Yes. We will avoid quarreling. Amen. No quarreling. We will avoid gossiping. We will avoid slandering or returning evil for evil. We will avoid indulging in pride in dress or behavior. We will dress simply and appropriately to our biological sex. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I got to put that stuff in there. It's so stupid that we got to go through all this nonsense. Well, anyway, we do. Um, ladies wear modest dresses, come below the knee, set in sleeve, revealing no cleavage. Gentlemen are to wear modest slacks and. I am telling you right now, when I print this out the first time, I showed it to my friend Joe, and he pointed out that I didn't, listen to what I wrote. I first wrote this. I wrote, our gentlemen agree to wear modest slacks and skirts. <laughs> Man, I cannot believe that I wrote that. But brother yeah yeah 
Well, at any rate, uh, Brother Joe got that straight, so we changed that K to an H. And so we're all in good shape there. All forms of entertainment that are unholy or weaken our conscience. Uh, TV, gambling, movies, internet sites, dancing, secret orders like the Masonic Lodge. We're going to stay away from that stuff. Um, we, when we have an entertainment, we're going to ask, would we like the Lord Jesus to join us here in what we're doing? And we're going to follow the advice of Susanna Wesley, who said, whatever weakens your reason impairs the tenderness of your conscience, obscures your sense of God, takes off your relish of things spiritual or whatever increases the strength and authority of your body over your mind, that thing is sin to you, however innocent it may in itself be. So we're just trying to say, be careful about this entertainment thing. We could preach a long time on that because entertainments are, as you know, a big problem. Okay, so um, are there any questions? Do you have a pen? Okay. How old do you have to be to get one of these? I think it's I think it's eighteen, but it might be sixteen. Uh, um, hang on. Going to the official book now. Find out the age. What is the official? I don't even know where to find this. I wrote this stupid book and I can't figure out where to write, where I put that. Okay. Mm, government, okay. Let's see here. Sign a covenant. Well, we're going to say, um, ten years of age. Yeah, that's amazing. No, <laughs> cannot believe we don't have that in here. Okay. No, everybody that thinks it should be eighteen, say amen. Everybody thinks it should be younger. Say amen. Okay, we're going to go with 18 right now. And if it changes the vote, we'll add the 16-year-olds. I can't find it. Okay, so uh, hand that out to, hand one of these out to everybody. Um, now, after you get done filling this out, I want you to fold it into fourths at least fold it generously so that nobody can see what you put on it and this is to be seen by nobody but me nobody if you find these sitting around anywhere and you open them up and you read them you will be under penalty of the almighty for disobeying your pastor pass these out there's it's it's like three sheets per one but you only need really the top one to make this decision okay you want to pass them out Haley oh you're sick um Joe you want to pass them out no you're too old um let's see here who else did Vivian are you a passer outer yeah can you pass out pass out in groups you're kind of a teacher type you can do that I want to say thank you to Sister D for providing us some dry erase expo markers that we can actually read that are black. And uh, that was a very thoughtful thing. We appreciate that. And um, let's see here. I was supposed to preach on Ezra and Nehemiah tonight, but I've got three minutes till the end of the service. Would you like to, anybody want to stay for overtime tonight? What is it? Like, if you go to a, to a baseball game and it goes into extra innings, you think, wow, this is really exciting. If you go to a, 
a hockey game and they're, they're going into overtime, it's tied up and they're trying to get to a, the final Stanley tooth Cup. knocked out and the Stanley Cup. <laughs> yeah. this one only had two. Okay, just put it there. Um, then what? All right, anyway. So, um, but we'll, okay, we won't have extra innings tonight at church. We'll just keep it at 8 o'clock. Yes, sir. All right. That's correct. If you can say that those things are true about you, you can write it down. You can, you can participate. What's that? Yeah, no, no, that's fine. If, you, if, you, if you're, fa- you're faithful, if you sign, if, yeah, you can, you may. I'm just telling you, you qualify. Today is August the 31st, the last day of the month. Your what does? Oh, well, that's Mrs. Jones wrote it. Okay. So there's that and that. And where is the... um... Yeah. Okay. When you get done with your official ballot, you may put it in this box. And Cameron, you can go around and collect them. Uh, we didn't take an offering tonight. Um, so if you have an offering, Josh is going to collect it. So, it what? Thank you for hopefully pointing that out. Didn't we sing happy birthday to him on Sunday? Yes, we did. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, well, would you just like stand up, Catherine, and sing a solo to him on happy birthday? I know she would. Lord, bless the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joshua. Happy birthday to you. And many more. How old are you, Josh? Josh, how old are you? He's 40? Forty-six. Okay. He's 46? Wow. He's getting up there. All right. Everybody, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. Um, Heather loves it when you do that to your offering, too. When you fold those dollar bills, thir- she, she thinks that's just like the coolest thing when she takes 12 hours to unfold your dollar bill. Uh, <laughs> it, it helps her grow in grace. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, anybody else? Uh, have anything to add or subtract and uh, what do we need to do here yes sir if marijuana becomes legal would it be okay to smoke it yeah it would be the same as tobacco and it's the same as alcohol that's legal those are both hard on your health and we would not think that would be something a Christian who believes their body's the temple of the Holy Ghost would want to do. Besides that it makes you a lazy slacken bum. That's right. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. It's legal to commit adultery but it's not right. Amen. But it used to be illegal to murder. Yeah. In some cases it still is. Amen. My dentist told me yesterday that uh, he had a family that was coming really faithfully. And then the Roe v. Wade decision came down and he stood up in church and was thanking God that the Supreme Court came down with that decision to 
to overturn Roe v. Wade, and they haven't been back in church since. So he called them up to find out what was going on, and the man said, well, uh, I'm afraid the ladies in my family were very offended by what you said in that political comment about Roe versus Wade. And uh, Dennis said, well, I didn't think it was political, it was moral, but uh, I think that, you know, and so then he said, well, and the man said, I also have this teenage granddaughter that's been coming with us, and I don't want to influence her. Uh, yeah. I just would like to say that it's okay to influence your family for right and good and truth. And don't be, don't be a wimp. Call it like it is. You can love your kids or whatever, but for sure, tell them that's wrong. In fact, if you loved them, if you really loved them, you'd tell them the truth. Amen. The most, the most hateful thing you could do is let your kid make a decision to damn them and take them to hell without you saying a word about it because you didn't want to influence them. Ha! Huh. All right, enough of that. Let's stand together, please. All right, we're going to sing our closing prayer tonight. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you, everybody. Two.